Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another one of 12 Three Marketing Act webinars or our virtual user groups. Thank you to those of us who are joining live this morning as well as those of you on YouTube. Today's topic is going to be about Act groups, both dynamic groups and static groups. So we've covered in the past weeks all about the Act contact list. Today I'm working out of the Act Premium version 19.2 database. And uh, this is a demo database with, with fake data in here, with the exception of my contact record. We have 27 contacts here, and I can view all contacts by going to the contact section of ACT and saying view all. Every ACT installation comes with a copy of the demo database. You can find it by going to File, Open, Share Database. This will show you a list of databases on your computer, and you can go ahead and choose the one that you want to work out of, including a uh, a demo database there for you. So we know how to do lookups with an act. We've done in previous weeks how you can use the quick lookup button over here to find, um, you know, if I want to search for a part of a name, I can type contact contain, uh, type a few letters of the last name. If I type bold, then I've got myself, Stephen Bolden, comes right up here as one of the only results. But today we're going to focus on act groups. Groups are saved lookups and searches that you can do with an act. And they can be both static and dynamic groups. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Some things you might want to use groups for, uh, they really have very many uses. You could maybe have a holiday card mailing list group, or you could have an e-marketing group. The folks of you that are registered for this virtual users group are a group in my database of people that have expressed interest or wanted to sign up for these emails in the past. Um, there are very many uh, possibilities, sometimes uh, sales territories, lead prospects, trade show, import leads, you name it. Groups are kind of as far as the eye can see with as far as ACT goes in terms of their flexibility and power. The ACT demo database comes with some predefined groups in here. And if you click on the group sidebar in your database, you actually might see a few in there already, or many for those of you that have been using ACT a long time. I've probably explored this a bit in the past, but I think hopefully you learned something new today too. If I look at this group of employees, for example, the group name is employees. The description says contact records where the ID or status field is equal to employee. So there are six contacts in the group. I can see that down here below the group sidebar panel. It shows me how many contacts are in a group and that, that count will update as I move across different groups in the database to show me how many are in there. This is a good example of a dynamic group and we're gonna build one together. Contact records where the ID status field is equal to employee. So if I look at one of these sample records in here and see the ID status listed as employee, um, automatically the group criteria that's defined to look for this is adding Chris Huffman into this group. The beauty of these dynamic groups is that as I add and remove contacts over time from the database. If I add a new contact and mark them as an employee, or if I take an old contact and delete it or change their ID status, dynamic groups are always updated the instant you open them. Uh, just moving away from them and coming back always does a fresh snapshot lookup of exactly who meets that criteria at that time. So defining good criteria for a dynamic group uh, really helps keep your, your groups updated over time. And today I wanna to build one for an e-marketing group. That'll be our example for the day. So if I wanna build a new group, I can use the new group icon up here. It looks like a silhouette of a few people with a plus sign next to this. This icon only appears when you're in the group section of ACT already. When I start a new group, I have now, everything is blanked out. The group name is a required field. I give it something that is descriptive so that not only you, but everybody else that's sharing your database and also you maybe a year from now can remember what you are doing and what this group is about. I'll call this one uh, Act Webinar E-Marketing Test Group. The description is optional, but it's often helpful to fill this one out as well. Um, maybe a, a few lines about what the criteria was for how you put people in this group or what the original intent was. I'm gonna say uh, contact with email addresses, um, not opt out. And then I save. There is a save icon up here in ACT. Uh, people sometimes ask me, 
why do I always compulsively save? Act does technically have a, a have an auto save as you move around between fields, um, and it actually does work pretty well. But out of habit and safety's sake, I'm always spamming the save button regardless. So I've just created myself a blank empty group. I've given it a name and a description. It's got nothing else in here. But let's say I want to add some contacts to this group. To do so, I can go to the contacts tab and press this add slash remove contacts window right here. I press add slash remove contacts, then a panel appears. And this panel has a fine line that divides it into a top and bottom half. And these are my two types of group membership of how I can create this group. So I said earlier that there's two types of groups. We have static and dynamic. Static groups are just that. They are unchanging. You make them manually and set them once, and that group will be the same forever. Manually add or remove group members. The dynamic groups, rather than adding and removing contacts from the group individually, you will only specify the criteria and filters that you want to use for the group, and they'll be automatically added. We'll make a static group first because they're the more simple kind. So manually add or remove group members. I went to my add remove contacts, and then I can press this contacts button right here. A window appears, and this shows all contacts in my database. I can sort these columns by name, company, and email address. You can also start typing their last name in this box to kind of find a jump to your contacts that you're looking for. But essentially, I have everybody in the database on the left side and the members of the group on the right side. And I can pick and choose by selecting somebody on the left and using the single arrow to move them over and add them to the group. This certainly has its uses. If you want to make a group of just a handful of contacts, uh, that you want to pick and choose for, for some purpose. For example, if I'm using an e-marketing group, uh, one important thing to do before you ever send out an e-marketing blast is to test it by sending it to yourself and usually a few other internal people at your organization first. So many people will just pick and choose a group of four or five um, people on the marketing team that you might have that you might want to add into this add into this group. So you can go through and individually select them and use the single arrows to move them over. The double arrows, by the way, will move everybody at once. So the double arrow to the left is add all or remove all. And once I've chosen the contacts I want in my static group, I can press OK. Their names will fill out this panel up here. And I'll press OK again, and voila. Very straightforward stuff. We have our static group, and th these people will always be in the group, no matter when I look at it into the future. If I look at my group's history and notes, this is another fun thing about groups, is that all of the tabs that we normally see on an individual contact record, such as activities, opportunities, history, or notes, are all consolidated now. This is actually all of the histories that are involved with all four of these contacts consolidated into one feed. In this particular example, because I'm in the demo database, there's not very many history and no notes. But if there were multiple notes and histories for each of these contacts, they would be appearing here as a consolidated list. And that can have its own uses as well, especially with the opportunities if you have sales territory groups. Let's say I want to change this into a dynamic group, though, because that's the real bread and butter about what today's session is about. I'm going to start by removing these four people from this group. So I'll go back into contacts. Remove all, OK, and OK, and now they are gone. And I will go back into add or remove contacts. And this time, instead of choosing my static members, I'm going to go under the dynamic members section. It shows me what the criteria are for the group in this panel down here. But all it tells me is there's currently no criteria for this group. I haven't specified any yet. So I'm going to say edit criteria. And this is the part where you need to really start breaking out that logic cap and thinking exactly as the computer's logic system does for finding these criteria. A group can have an unlimited number of criteria. You can have as many filters as you'd like. You can be finding contacts in New York State only, whose last name starts with a B, whose uh, zip code starts with a one. 
uh, whose last contact date was in the last few weeks. Just as an example, I don't know why you'd ever want that particular group, but to illustrate, to build our criteria, we have four drop down windows here that kind of make one line item, and then we're going to build out these four panels and then add them to the list one at a time. The first drop down menu says what kind of records are going to go in this group. This is almost always going to be a contact. You can have groups of opportunities and actually products that you sell in your company. Overwhelmingly, almost every single time, you're going to be using contact here. So the first column could almost be ignored. The second one is your field name. So when we're making this criteria, what are we interested in? Well, if this is going to be an e-marketing group, I would like to make sure that they have an email address. That's pretty important for an e-marketing group. So I'll say I'm looking for email. And then we have an operator and a value. So the operator is what kind of operation we're doing on the field. So if I wanted to say email contains, and then I could type in a value in here. So I could say email contains Gmail, for example, and I would return back all of the email addresses that contain the word Gmail in there somewhere. We also have things like equal to, which is different than contains. It also starts with if I wanted to look for just the first few letters or ends with or not equal to. All of the different logical operators in this drop down list are slightly and subtly different from each other. It's kind of important to understand the differences between them by thinking strictly logically. In this instance, though, I just want to find email contains data. I don't care necessarily if it is a Gmail address or any email address. I just want there to be no blanks. So if I say contains data, my value field actually blanks out. Uh, there's nothing to specify here. I don't need to specify anything further. I'm just looking at email, contains data, add that to my list, and there it is in my group criteria. If I press this preview button, it will show me my results. Before I continue to add further criteria to this list, it tells me there's 25 contacts that meet the criteria that I've specified of email address contains data. At this point, I could be done. So I'm going to back out of this just to show by example. If I press OK, my dynamic members criteria now has a line item in there for email contains data. Press OK. And here is a group of all the email addresses in the database. Like I said, this is a dynamic group, so if somebody else is adding or importing or updating email addresses in the future, this group will change with it. Let's go a bit more advanced now. If I go back into Add or Remove Contacts, back under my dynamic members and Edit Criteria, let's say I want to narrow this down further. I don't want only people that have an email. Maybe I want to make sure that this is just a certain ID status as well. So I can say field name, and I'll go down to ID status. I'll say ID status does not contain, and now I have to specify a value, does not contain what. And I will, if I use this drop down, it shows me some values that I have in my ID status field. I can type in my own value up top, but it's useful that this drop down list shows me the ones that I already have. I'll say it does not contain competitor. Maybe I don't want my competitors to be in my e marketing group. And so if I add this to my list in preview, as it happens, I still have 25 people in the group. Uh, there must not have been anybody under this ID status that was a competitor. Um, how about I say, as well, ID status does not contain supplier. 23, I've narrowed it down a bit further. So now I have a group of contacts whose email contains data and ID status does not contain competitor and ID status does not contain supplier. I'm putting emphasis on the and here. And here's why, because you can have as many criteria as you want, but sometimes you don't want all the criteria to be met. So for example, let's say I wanted a group that was a territory group. 
fact, I'll show this one by example. I'll, I'll say OK and save this up. I'm going to make a new group, and I'll call this one New England Territory, for example. And I want this group to contain contacts who are in New England. So I can go to my Add Remove Contacts and say Dynamic Members. And I will say I want the state of uh, the state is equal to Massachusetts or also more than that I'll say state equal to um, say Connecticut and save some time state equal to New Hampshire obviously there's more but for sake of time we'll leave Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. If I try to turn results, it tells me there's no records found that match the specified criteria. And how can that be? Well, it might be the case that there's nobody in the database that is from any of these three states. But the bigger problem here is that I have actually told the group criteria that I'm looking for a contact whose state is Massachusetts and Connecticut and New Hampshire. There's nobody in the database whose state is all three things at once. It just can't happen. Uh, it can't be equal to three different values. This is why you need to mind your ands and ors, which are specified in this column shown below after you've added multiple criteria. Again, like I said, you gotta have the logic cap on because we gotta think very strictly logically. This is actually a drop down. If I click on the last column with this and here, I can say the state is equal to Massachusetts, or Connecticut or New Hampshire. And as it happens, I've actually still got nobody in the database that meets any of those. Um, that is just a coincidence there with their demo database. I'll add one more and say state equal to New York. Change that to an or and preview. And now I've got 12. As it happens, all of them are in New York. So that's a good lesson in minding your ands and ors. There's even another column here with parentheses. There's a left paren and a right paren. And although these line items appear on separate lines, I want you to visualize them and imagine them as if they were all on one very long line. You can actually have parentheses, just like your old mathematics order of operations, where I could say, I want somebody who's in Massachusetts or any of these states by opening a parenthesis there and a closing parenthesis over there. And then maybe I want to still have that email value on there. Email contains data. And if I add that to list, based on these parentheses, I've got the state equal to any of these four with my ORs, close parenthesis. So any of the, one of these four criteria needs to be true and the email contains data. And I know that's the part where I lose some people, but by all means, please call me and, and talk to me when you're trying to make your groups. I'm more than happy to help. Um, there is almost nothing you can't do with these ACT groups. You just need to be careful about the logic that you put into there. Sometimes I think that the groups behave as if there's black magic afoot, but I know it's not possible in a system based purely on logic alone. When you're working with groups now, you've got your groups built, again, with, with consolidated notes and history between them. You can convert a group back into a lookup at any time. Some people want to ask about, you know, maybe putting the group into Excel. You can't actually throw a group directly into Excel from the groups view. Um, a little silly, but there's just one small step involved between. There is this magnifying glass icon right here that says create lookup from group. And by clicking that, it takes my group, moves me over to the contacts section of ACT, and creates a lookup of exactly the contacts that were in the group. Now we're in the contacts side, and you can export this to Excel. You can customize your columns and, and what you're looking at with the group here, or work with the records in this way if you choose. Not only can you go from groups into lookups by clicking on them and using the Create Lookup from Groups button, but you can go the other direction as well. If I have a lookup, and let's say I've uh, narrowed down some contacts here that I want to put into a certain group, or I've used my criteria to find who I want in there, 
You can go the other direction by going to lookup, groups, save lookup as group. And this will save my current lookup that I have on the screen as a new group that I can specify. Save it up and there they are. There's also alternatively under this contacts dropdown a very similar operation. If I select a certain group of contacts or a certain bundle, I can go to contacts and say add selected to group and specify one of my pre-existing groups and add them in there as static members. I mentioned that groups can be either static or dynamic. They actually can also be a blend of the two. Um, for example, I have this dynamic group of everybody else that's in this territory, but if I wanted to manually add somebody else that for whatever reason they don't meet the other criteria, but on a, on a one-off basis, I really want to make sure that I can add Robert Manners to that group. I can pick Robert Manners, add him into New England, and now he is in there, despite the fact that he doesn't meet the other criteria. If I look at my add or remove contacts, I've kind of got a blend of both. You can still go into the static manually add or remove group members and specify additional members to go in there. I think that just about wraps up for today. Thank you for your time this morning. As always, uh, this video will be on YouTube. And for those of us that are watching from YouTube right now, please, I invite you to join us next week live. Uh, we do every Tuesday morning. Uh, you can sign up at our website, 123.com, or look at the description below. I will have a link to the form where you can sign up for future meetings. I appreciate uh, you guys joining out today, and have a great week. Thank you, and goodbye.